and welcome once again to Simple Groundwork and Diorama Techniques with me, your host and instructor, Bill Grigg. And as usual, hello David, <laughs> behind the camera we have our clam bake Dave. I'm back, I'm back. Yes he is. Uh, recently uh, Dave went to a clam bake and was bombarded by a uh, unruly seagull. <laughs> so today he's dressed in a ghillie suit made entirely out of seaweed with a lovely, um, <laughs> I had this, I had this all set up, now I'm screwing it up. <laughs> and he's got, a, he's got a beautiful clam, he's got a beautiful helmet made out of clam shells, so, um, and a horseshoe crab, so. He's got a great imagination. <laughs> <laughs> Once again, here we are. Uh, we're going to continue along with a C-47 spooky build that we have been doing, and I believe the last time that we were together, I was doing a lot of interior painting. So... Without any further ado, and with a whole lot more do, we're ready to do, and here's what we've got. So, what we did is, I've gone and I've painted a lot of stuff, like I've painted the floorboards and the interior bulkheads and things like that, and I did do one side of the fuselage. The other side of the fuselage we have, and what I think I will do with you first off is paint the inside of the fuselage just so you can see it once again and get it in your head. Then we're going to go over and do a couple of minor modifications on some of the kit parts that you can do. Remember, I want this build to be straight out of the box with no aftermarket additions, no resin, no uh, photo etched seat belts, things like that. We may have to change the decals because I was looking at that decal sheet and it does look like it's a little glossy, but that, that will be determined later on. So let's get going and let's get into simple groundwork and diorama techniques. We are into the model builders series. And what are we going to start off doing? First of all, we are going to find our interior green paint and we are going to go into another action packed and exciting, <laughs> exciting thing of what do we do folks stir your paint stir your paint stir your paint and get the appropriate brush remember when painting a flat surface we use a flat headed brush so let's get going let's do this right now take the cap off I've stirred this paint so many times we don't have to sit here for three hours and stir the paint but again just to reinforce what we're doing I want to do this for you completely. Let me get these parts out of the way. Try to keep your uh, try to keep your work area fairly clean. I know a lot of modelers that boy, you'd swear there was a typhoon, a hurricane, and a tsunami all happen at once on top of their desk. I don't build that way. Also, um, if you think there's going to be some of this internal area exposed one of the things that you would probably want to do and Dave we will get in tight on this and I'll point to it but right here we have what we call an injection pin mark little pins come up in the mold to push the piece out of the mold now because this is lower than the floorboards it doesn't have to go out and the same with around the window area we're not really going to see that but let me show you what I mean we're going to take the fuselage, put the fuselage together, and this open door remains open on spooky gunships because that's where one of the miniguns sticks out. So you can see a lot in there and you can see a lot of detail inside. So therefore, if there was a pin mark in here, you would need to take that out. I haven't encountered a pin mark yet that I need to take out, but when I do, I'll show you exactly how to do that because there is a little trick about going about doing that. So anyhow, let us do this and again let me get this out of the road so you can see what I'm doing let me get this down flat so we can see very well what I'm doing here and again I've stirred my paint and I'm putting it out onto my palette now I need a lot because I'm doing an interior piece here so you can see this really well And that should be good enough for right now. A little PBM. Which is an acronym for what? Paint Bottle Maintenance. Mm -hmm. Boy, this is honest, honestly, if you aren't doing paint bottle maintenance, folks, 
you're really doing yourself a disservice. I know I say it all the time, but it is true. Okay, let's grab some paint and let's go. We're going right into the nose. Now I know that I should be painting interior green inside of here for the mere fact that I have done it on the other piece and I've looked at my instruction sheet and my instruction sheet has told me to paint this area. So this may take a little while. There's the locating pin for the floorboard so you know you don't have to go lower than that and here's two more so you know you don't have to paint any lower than that. And you can see how advantageous it is for me to be using this flat brush. Painting into the overhead. A little more toward the camera. A little more toward the camera? There you go. Okay. Now back in the days when they used to make interior green in a rattle can, you could have taken this and and sprayed inside the but unfortunately the manufacturers and all their wisdom have decided that the color that you use the most <laughs> they don't put in a spray can anymore which absolutely blows my mind I, I'm sorry I have to keep tipping this funny folks but I'm having a little hard time seeing what I'm painting here now you can see how as I go around these ribs I kind of stab the paintbrush in there because I want to get around these ribs. And remember where the where the the floorboard line is. Now, I don't think I will continue because this is going to take a long time. Well, actually, I'm almost done. Let us just keep going. Dave, uh, we don't have to worry about Martha anymore. Dave, Dave, uh, <laughs> Clint Lake, Dave took the shotgun away from her last week. <laughs> oh, good old Martha. Good old Martha in a pickup truck. She was a tough girl for 103, huh, Dave? Yeah, you better believe <laughs> Some guy in uh, Australia was on the news the other night, just turned 106. Imagine that. Imagine the stuff he's seen in his life. You know something, folks? I'll tell you a good story here while we're painting. When the... Uh, when the man first, when men first landed on the moon, which I think was what, Dave? You're a space guy, 68? July 16th, 1969. <laughs> Say it again. July 16th, 1969. 69. July 16th, 1969. My, uh, my grandmother was still alive at the time, and we were standing out on a porch that she had that came off of her house. And we were looking up at the moon because they were up there walking around in the moon. And it was one of the most profound statements ever. I remember my grandmother standing and looking up at the moon and saying, you know something? There's guys on the moon walking around right now. And I remember the first day the Wright brothers flew. Imagine that. That's kind of cool. <laughs> Isn't that cool? It really is kind of cool. So imagine this guy here, 106 years old, the things that he's seen. Now, your detail... Folks, stops right about here, but we're going to keep on going a little bit further than that for just insurance purposes because I'm almost positive I can check my instructions. I'm almost positive at the back of this here there'll be a bulkhead that blocks off the back of the aircraft. But you can see that to do the entire interior here really hasn't taken that long. Now, airbrush folks, obviously, it would be much more to your benefit to break out your airbrush and spray the interior of this. And that is it. That's what you're looking for, folks. Okay? That's what you're looking for. So now, we will clean the brush 
And let me show you what we would what we will do. Where's my thinner? What we will do to get us a little bit further down the uh, the path here of enhancing the aircraft. Now I should probably have some place I can lay this good and flat while I work on other things. But let me show you one thing. Oh, one thing I want to do first off. Let's do this first before we do the other thing. Clean your brush good. And Dave, get a get a uh, get a wide shot of me doing this. Okay, folks, this is what we do. Remember this now. Little spit in the fingers and into the brush tip. And you can see, I'll put this right up against my shirt, you can see how well that spit has reformed that brush tip. Plus it'll make it good and hard and then you can go back and if you need to do any additional painting or anything like that, you can go right to the brush tip and you can just again just break the very tip of the brush as you start to paint, leaving more the barrel of the brush, you know, a little stiffer. It gives you a little bit more control. Of course, eventually it's going to break down and you're going to have a, a brush that's, you know, working as a brush should work, but at first it's good for that. It's also good to keep it a little stiffer sometimes in the tip if you're doing a little light dry brushing with a little highlight color in there. That gives you a lot more control over that. But right now, because I know it's going to be kind of hard to see inside the interior of this aircraft once it's put together. So to help you, and this is something that everybody can do, this is not an advanced technique, this is just an enhancement within basic construction. So what I do is I need to take out the floorboard, and we will take this out, we will cut this out. Remember, don't break your pots from the tree. And again, using the flat side of the flush cut dikes here, we go in and clip that, and clip this, and one more time. Here we go. Now that's out. And again, you know how I like to keep things kind of uh, in the ballpark of my brain here. So I want to get rid of this section of sprue with the pilots on it. Just using regular wire cutters to take these out and I will take his foot off. And get rid of that. All right, now, let us see what's going on here. And I'll, I'll pick up the instruction sheet so you can see exactly what I'm going to do here. I want to look at these pictures here, because this is my concern right here. This door is closed. And from what it looks like to me, is it looks like this here goes into my radio compartment. Well, if this is a solid door, building this radio compartment and then taking these two pieces of fuselage. The radio compartment's located right around here. So we take the two pieces of fuselage and put them together. Lo and behold, it's gone. There's a little observation dome up here, but that's that's so small in this scale you won't be able to see through it. And of course the windscreen is so small that you won't be able to see in this. So maybe we should add a little bit more light and that's what I'm going to do next for you. We're going to modify one of the kit parts, and like I say, this is not, it, oh, excuse me, this is not an advanced technique. It's just something that you, too, can do at home. All right, so we need to find part number 48. And it's right here, it's this piece right here. Now, as you can see on the back of it, this is what's going to help us do this. There is an engraved line in the back. This is the back of the cockpit. You will not see this, but this is going to what is is getting all tongue tied. This these indented lines are going to be what helps us take this door and open this door up so we can get a little bit more light and hopefully get a little bit more visual inside the cockpit. And again, we take this and cut this out. Ooh, that's tight, that's tight. Oh, 
There we go. Take that out. Get our parts out of the way. Again, trying to keep everything neat and clean. Notice also, folks, I use my cutters. Dave, you might as well follow me right over this. I use my cutters, and I put them right back where I keep them. That way I always know where they are, and I'm not standing here going, where's my cutters, where's my cutters? Because we all do that. <laughs> we've, we've all done that. How many times have you had your car keys in your hand, set them down three seconds later? Where's my car keys? So here's what we're going to do. Because it's indented, we're going to go in, and we are going to score a couple of lines. This I can't do on an angle for you folks because i got to press kind of hard. But you can see, there we go. And I should actually be doing it, well I am going to do it because I should be safe here. See how I'm pulling it towards myself? I'm also on a piece of pine. Now I could get in here with a razor knife and do this as well. But actually, I'm already through the I'm already through the plastic. And again, I'll show you the entire process of cutting out the door. Now, actually, we're not going to actually cut the door out. Well, you know what? Maybe I might need to. All right, I'll, let me take that. I'll take that statement back for a second here. <clears throat> Boy, I'm pushing good and hard. And this is building a model with Bill. <clears throat> and you can see it takes a little time. <clears throat> now we're going to start to work this a little bit here. See if I can get that a little bit. Nope, I still need to get through the top. This is the tough cut, the top cut. And while we're doing this, like I said, just so we can get a little more light through the piece and hopefully we can start to see some of this internal detail. But boy, this top is coming out rough. There it is. There it is. There we go. And the door opens this way but we don't want it into the cockpit. So I do believe I'm going to take that right out of there. Let me try pushing it back. Nope, that isn't going to work. came right out. See, it came right out. So now, when we take this and mount this piece, which I don't want to do yet, when we mount this piece, it will go... Da, da, da. Here's our two receiving holes right here up oh, other way now here's his good this is good to see there's two different holes here where this piece mounts you can see that there is a wider one and a narrower one and the same thing on our piece this is so you know exactly how the piece fits there's a wide side let me put this down there's a wide side and there's a narrow side so even though I would rather have this side here with all the detail facing forward, that is not the case unless, of course, I just cut off my tabs and put it in, put it in the way I want to. But let's, let's keep this and uh, let's do this properly. And this is how we would install this piece there. And then we would take this door and we would take this door and mount it, there's the door handle, so we want to go like this, and we would mount it this way inside, which would give me some more light so I can look through everything. But before we do that, we need to enhance everything. And we might as well do that on this piece here and show you it. And I will do that in two seconds. Okay, now what I have done here I've made myself a little bit of a painting platform and really all it is is a piece of scrap wood I white glued a piece of board to the front 
and then to get it level you can see I bit a mishmash here but as I take it and sit it down it sits down very very flat for me and gives me a good painting platform now there's a couple ways you can do this you can take some double stick tape which I don't believe I have any more of or what everyone has at their house they have some masking tape you just take that we've all done this we double it up stick it down the board and I want the other side stuck too and we'll put that right there just to give us some enhancement in the back and stick that down now folks let's start uh, doing some classes here now what do you think I'm going to do next to enhance this piece and again insert answer here and what do you think folks the old familiar oil paint the low odor thinner and a wash on top of the piece so again out onto my non-absorbent surface little tiny bit of oil paint <laughs> Dave looked at me and even though he was in his in his seaweed ghillie suit I saw <laughs> that's quite the suit you got on there David I appreciate that <laughs> can hardly see you I can hardly see you with your ghillie suit there made out of seaweed and a horseshoe crab for a helmet all right we checked the cut of the paint seem to be good I've got some very deep recesses in here so I can get quite a lot of highlight and again we go in and notice what I do now I'm gonna do this flat and then I'll pick it up and show you folks I'll just do this one side can you see it oh you can see that yeah okay there's a little you can see it a little bit now we'll do the other side we pick up a little thing that's good you can see that huh flat like that that's good and again, watch, touch, touch. Do not stroke the brush head. What happens sometimes when you stroke the brush head when you're doing this because you have not put a barrier down here, which you'd, I would sometimes put an acrylic barrier to barrier my solvent-based paint, which is here. This is solvent-based. We cut this with a thinner. Sometimes what happens if you don't put down an acrylic clear flat barrier if you were to take your brush and and do this what could happen is you would get to regenerate this and you might burn through and if you burn through then you're going to see the bare gray plastic you don't want to avoid that that's why we touch 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 and you can do the same we could do the same throughout this entire piece I got paint in my hands here we would do this throughout the entire piece as a matter of fact I could actually probably start to do this on the floorboards I could start to do this on my interior and I would just carry this throughout the entire piece matter of fact let's let's I've got the I've got it out we might as well do it because this is how you're going to do this folks this is how you're going to do this my students you're going to come in and see if I can do this on an angle for you but obviously it's kind of got to lay flat because it is a wash but we're getting right in there also this is good to see you can see how that injection pin mark it's in a spot that doesn't make any difference but you can see if it was in a spot that did make a difference how glaring it would be now that you've enhanced it with a wash so therefore you need to take those out and I'll show you that when we get to a point if I need to do it and again like I say pretty much once you close this this piece up all this interior work is kind of just going to go bye bye on you which is a shame because they do give you a beautiful radio compartment but here's the thing when we're coming down here here's the part that's going to really enhance well is going to be all this rib area see the ribs give the wash some place to hold and that is what you want when you're doing a detail piece if a piece is flat perfectly flat you're better off going on top of a flat flat piece with filters instead of going on to the flat piece 
with a hardcore wash because now what you can do is you can take that flat base paint that has no detail whatsoever i.e. and let's say like we did this tail surface you can see it's just just plain flat there is a pin mark but let's say this is plain flat it would be better for me to go on there with filters and tone my base paint rather than to wash my base paint which is dark and aggressive does that make sense Dave did that make sense what I said and again folks listen if, if you don't understand some of these things you can always call the cable company they don't mind you calling them and you can say hey I didn't get what he said you know something to, to Dave I was thinking about we should start saying this is episode 18 no this is episode 19 right we should start saying that so if people have questions they can say could you please play episode 19 again so from uh, this point on I think we'll start doing that if I remember to do it I'll start saying this is you know episode 18 this is episode 19 we're in episode 19 right now And I just broke my rule, didn't I? All right. And that, my friends, is how you go about doing this. It's all washed inside. Now I need to put that somewhere where it's going to dry and dry flat. You might as well follow me over, Dave. You might as well see how I, how I suspend this. I'm just putting it on an open box. And you can see it lays very flat. This is my Wildcat Crash. Uh, box. So I got all kinds of wildcat parts in there and things. Now what else can we do? What else can we do? Well we might as well do these interior pieces and to make that easy that can lay nice and flat but this one here it would be to my benefit to cut this out. And I'm not too worried about my part numbers anymore. If I was what I could do and believe it or not, I have done this on very, uh, very hard builds. I take a pencil, and this is part number 40, whoops, excuse me. This is part number mystery. What the heck part is this? Hang on, folks. We have a dilemma. 75, rear bulkhead. Aha. Ah ha ha, yes, this is it. So that's what I'm going to do. I will do that right now. Take a magic marker. This is the back piece. You're never going to see this piece here. And just to keep our brain straight, I'm going to put it down. You can do this with any, at any kind of permanent marker, but... Geez, I wonder what part number that's going to be. Scratch my head. Okay, and again, we'll do the same thing. We'll take this piece, we'll bring it over here, get some double stick, or some masking tape. Matter of fact, I just, I just realized, oh, I do have some double stick there. From radio control, the radio control tape from the double stick. Fold it over, put it down in case I need more room on this. Stick it to it. Now, why am I putting tape here, and why am I sticking the piece to it? Anybody have any ideas? Obviously, I do not want, <laughs> again, Dave in his ghillie suit. Yeah, ooh, all I see is a motion of seaweed. Uh, I don't want my piece to move. And that is why I take this and do this. Now, if you want to get real aggressive and you want to keep on painting right away, you could take out a hair dryer and blow this with a hair dryer. I've done that when I've wanted to keep on building. And I think I'll do the same thing for this part here. This part here. That goes immediately behind the pilot seats. I'll show you that here on the instruction sheet. You can see that part. And you can see the part. And they're showing you right here where it goes. And you can put that up. And you can see that as well. So you know what's going on. 
Remember, an instruction sheet only serves as two parts placement, not construction sequence. You need to build it in a very logical manner, and sometimes instruction sheets don't do that. They have you doing things like putting in clear windows before you paint your outside of your body and things like that, which I don't. And also, uh, on this particular plane, um, there is an interior clear piece that needs to be put in, but uh, I'm not going to do that, and you can do this, you can replicate this with white glue. You don't need to buy the product that I'm going to use, but... Um, it's a better way to it's a better way to paint when we're going to paint the way I'm I'm going to uh, I'm going to be forced to airbrush this this the outside of the this uh, aircraft, which I know a lot of you don't own airbrushes, but uh, I I I want a um, I, how can I say this without being like a jerk about brush painting? I want a more controlled application of paint and that's the way I can do it <laughs> thank you I want to that's that's a good way to say this I want a more controlled application of paint and I can really accomplish that with an airbrush but but and there's always a butt monkey and everything but you can have a very pleasing appearance of this by painting this with a brush and I will probably do a wing you know like a spare parts wing or something to show you how this accomplished but I personally don't possess the skill and this is true I do not possess the skills to brush paint the outside of this aircraft to have it a very pleasing product for myself so that's that's why I'm going to go and choose to use the airbrush when I do this but like I say we all don't own airbrushes and uh, but it's not it's not an impossible thing I have a friend down Cape Cod that brush paints and I'll tell you, this guy brush paints as well as anyone does with an airbrush. I've, I've never seen results like this guy in my life. And I think what his trick is, now notice I also am reducing, I'm reducing the parts so I don't have all this mess. I don't know why, but I find empty trees confusing for some reason. I'm always looking like, oh, is there parts or did I miss anything? Did I? Well, I know I've not missed anything in that and that can go into the safety deposit box over there again keep your parts in your box so you know where everything is a little more tape double it over stick it down good and flat get the piece good and flat yep let's move that over a little bit there we go. And again, so my part does not move, grab a little thinner, cut my paint. Look at how thick I'm putting the paint now, too. Dave, get on top of the palette and take a good shot of that. See how thick that is compared to the other things I've been doing? That's because I really want to enhance these lines and really have these lines pop out. And again, we'll go from here over to the piece, and again, touch, touch, touch. You can also notice capillary action is taking that wash and drawing it right down those lines. Now, Dave, you might as well give them a good close-up of these three completed pieces. And maybe I can tilt that. Yeah. Well, I'm going to tilt it a little bit and kind of screw up the washes, but I've got to put that right back as soon as I can. Looks good. Looks good? Okay, and let's get that back. Just tilt it back and kind of roll your washes around. And take this and put this again somewhere nice and flat. And I can put this right up over here and let this dry. Now, let's get a little more. Let's get a little more detail oriented here. I'm kind of jumping around a little bit. Oh, I, I boo, boo, boo. Bad, bad, bad bill, bad bill, bad instructor. Clean your brush. And you notice what else I didn't do? I didn't take my piece and parts and put it away. Always keep a rag handy. Do you think I might have used this rag a few times? <laughs> a couple of times. What's this say? Manufactured during dinosaur age. Oh, okay. Dinosaurs obviously had a company going. Oh. 
Can't trust them dinosaurs. All right, I know what I want to do. We have taken and we have painted we. What's this we? We uh, what, what I've done, I've taken, I've painted, painted the, the uh, instrument panel black, which, you know, uh, never paint black for black, but in this case you can because pretty much when this goes in, you're really not going to see this. So what we're going to do to enhance this is I'm going to take a little bit of white and I'm going to dry brush a little bit of white onto this. And that is what we will do next. All right, let me get my white paint. We'll be right back. Okay, I've found my white paint. Going to unscrew it. And what are we going to do, folks? Everybody all at once. Shoot up, shoot up flares and fireworks. <laughs> Dave says we're going to make it its own ghillie suit out of seaweed. Now we know what we're going to do, don't we? We all know what we're going to do. Stir our paint. Wow, I haven't used this in a long time, Dave. I love the smell of fresh paint in the morning. It smells like dry brushing. Okay, again, good and stirred up onto the palette. I made a little mess there, so let's get rid of that. And again, a little PBM. That's what we're going to call this from now on, folks. PBM. Some poor guy just tuning in. PBM? What's he talking about? little paint bottle maintenance. Make sure the inside of my cap is fairly clean. Well, not fairly clean. You want the inside of your cap good and clean. That's why I say do not shake your paint. You shake your paint, it gets all up in the cap, gets all crudded up, and now all you've got is just a mess, and you're screwing down a mess, which doesn't give you the proper, uh, you know, it doesn't give you the proper seal on your paint cap. So, here's what we're going to do. Again, we need to select an appropriate dry brush, and when we select a dry brush, you might as well follow me over to my brushes, Dave. You want something that's kind of got a little stiffness to the head, Oh, this seems to be real good. And I'll show you why I chose this brush head. Bring it right over. We'll bring it right down on top of this. And again, I've done this many, many times. You've seen me do this a million times on the show. See how I've got a little resistance there? It's not flopping over. This is good for a dry brush because it gets control and there's still a stiffness in the barrel, yet the tip is very soft. That's why I say when you spit in the brush, you can stiffen up the barrel of the brush and then just break the tip of the brush and, you, and you're, you, you're so much better. you got so much better control. Okay. Now we go over here. We pick up a little bit of paint. We get our dry brush paper. Now when I dry brush white, I like to sometimes go on top of an old color just so I can see what I'm doing. But then again, if I'm on top of an old color, I regenerate the old color. I change the white. So that's something you got to be a little careful of, but it's what I'm going to do. And that's about what I'm looking for. Come over to the piece. And now very, very, very lightly, and I'm doing this looking at you, where I should be doing it differently. And I'm just going to start to just gently, and I mean gently, start to just rub this instrument panel. Now see how long it's taking. I'm not doing this all in one big huge shot. And if I have to work one area several times to get the detail up, uh, see this is moving too. Let me just push that down tight and get a little more angle and get a little bit more paint. The um, I don't know what a good term is. I, I, we'll, we'll make up one. We'll make up a Don King word. The brush out here on the dry brush is very critical when you're going on top of this instrument panel because you don't want too much volume there in the dry brush head. 
you want to take your time coming up. If, see, this piece is moving on me, which is not good. Okay, that's better. Can you see it, Dave? Yep. Okay. And you see, it doesn't, see folks, it, it, it's not instantaneous. So if you have to go over a certain spot, you know, several times, do it. But you can see, is that filming, Dave? Yes, it is. It is, you can see the, Beautiful. you can see the highlight coming in? Beautiful. You can see it, yeah? So small. Now, I'm really, really starting to run out of paint in the brush head, but you can see how, how much of an advantage it is to me because it's just hitting those raised areas on the, on the instrument panel. And that's what I want. Again, folks, showing you the entire process here. I don't want to go with this and then say, well, there's our instrument panel all done, and you wonder, oh, well, it only took them three seconds to do that? No, no, no. I think I will load up a little bit more and do this again. But this time I'm going to go to a... Um, it's getting so critical that I'm going to go to a nice empty spot here on the paper, a nice barren spot, and do this again. There we go. There we go. And you can really see how delicate. I mean, there's, there's your artificial horizon. You can see it. Beautiful. And now you can see I'm getting a little bit more aggressive with my brush strokes because I'm really getting down to where there's hardly any paint there. And there is some detail on this box here and we might as well do that as well because like I say once this aircraft is together all this work right here the only person that's going to see know that this was done is you yourself this will never unfortunately ever be seen inside this aircraft and it's one of the reasons I chose this kit to build is because I, I you know I don't know if I've said this before on the show, but I build to compete. I, I go into model contests. So therefore, if I was to do this for a model contest, I'd be doing a lot of things in this that you, as the average everyday model builder, could not do because I have access to photo etch parts and resin parts and detail parts that the, the normal guy does not uh, uh, have access to. Plus, I know most of my friends that own hobby shops, and me being a former hobby shop owner, I know that a lot of hobby shops do not stock those parts because they don't sell consistently. You could buy a, an interior detail part for, let's say, uh, this C-47, and it might sit in your shelf for five or six years before anyone decides to use it. So a lot of hobby shops do not stock that type of material. They have to need to buy that material online. But there we go, and you might as well, Dave, get a good close-up. I'll hold this up for our viewers and our students. And yet you get in good, Dave, I'll hold this real, real steady, and you can get in good and tight and get a good, good detail shot of that. That is beautiful. Came out good, didn't it? With just a little dry brush, folks, just a little dry brush. You don't need to be in there with all different colors and all this sort of stuff, especially when, you know, you think about it. Let's, let's kind of give them an example. When you think about this, this is going into this fuselage, and it's going in this way compared to the windscreen. You're not going to see this, and you're not going to be able to look through that open cargo door down through that little opening that we've cut and, and see this, but it is there, and that's how you do a good dry-brushed instrument panel. Okay? Now, what else do we need to do for the interior parts? I kind of kept this separate in a little, little jar here. Um, here's something we can do while we've got this out. And I've got this brush here. Let's take this and let me see how do I want to do this. Let's make my life easy and do this. 
Here's a... <laughs> oh, boy. Now, I'm, I'm showing you all my bad habits, but that's all right. Again, we're going to take a little tape, double it over, stick it up here, because I want to do the wash bowl in this. And I'm going to stick it right there so I can paint the wash bowl. And again, I'm going to clean my brush. You know, one thing you want to think about, uh, gang, as, as you're building, you want to make sure, Dave, you might as well follow me, follow me right down in this. Here's, here, we've got the palette out here. This is all wet. This is your dry brush paper here. What I do, I've noticed, and I do this. I've done it, I've done it on the show. I've, I've had this happen to me on the show. I take my hand. I put my hand down. I put it right in the paint. I pick it up. I don't know. I've got paint all over my hand here. I don't, you know, I'm not aware of it. So, therefore, if I was to put my hand down, let's say I was, you know, fitting a part in, and I put my hand down on my piece, that could no, you know, it could not work out well for you. So kind of keep everything sort of like where you know, you, you kind of know where everything is on your bench. But I know, boy, I've seen some guys, and honestly, I don't know how you find, <laughs> I don't know how you'd find this water bottle. <laughs> I mean, there's so much crap out of, how'd you find the water bottle? Is you got so much junk in your desk. Actually, I, you know, <laughs> he's going to know who I'm talking about. I had a friend that, um, his modeling table, honestly, was just a disaster. There was parts just clouded on this mound of this endless sea of tiny parts, and I, I couldn't believe it. He'd go, oh, you know, I need a battery cable. <laughs> oh, yeah, here it is. How, how did you know where that, I don't know. He knew where everything was in that absolute disaster of a mess. But it's the way he built, and obviously that's the way it kept his brain straight. Now, there's a couple ways we can do this wash bowl. And I think I will cheat and do this and show you a little trick here. Let's get a picture of the wash bowl first, Dave, and I'll point to it. Get that out of the way. Get this out of the way. Let's come in. The wash bowl is an indent inside this piece. Well, we want to control the paint in there when we do the wash bowl. So would it be to my benefit to go in there with a brush or would it be to my benefit to go in there with maybe something else? And what else could we go in there with? Any ideas? Any student? No, any ideas? I'm going to show you a good trick. Oh, and unfortunately, I did it on top of the silver paint. So, hey, guess what? We've got to change paint bottles. That was tough. Okay, we're going to take a little silver. Oh, this may not be any good. And... I'm going to take a toothpick. What I want in a toothpick here is I kind of want one of those round... There it is. That's what I'm looking for. This is... I'll put this right up against my shirt so you can photograph that, Dave. Yeah, got, it. got it? As compared to... Let me get another one here, Dave. Oh, that's a bamboo. That's a bam piece of bamboo. Hello. As compared to... Whoops. This toothpick. I don't want this one. I want to use this one because it's rounded and I can have a lot of control with it. So again, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go in. I'm going to use a toothpick to stir a little bit. And my silver paint is kind of thick. Oh yeah, look at that. See that? See that ball there, gang? Got it? Want me to hold up against the shirt? Yeah. Got it? Okay. Let's take that, let's close this up for just, because like I say, this paint is really kind of getting rough. All right, I'm going to take this, bring it over. Notice how I keep things out of the way. Bring it over, put it on the palette, and I'm going to grab, <laughs> I like to put things in my mouth, but I don't want to do this on the show. I want you to people to build correctly, not pick up the bad habits that I have. Grab a little thinner and you might as well what you might as well follow this right down to the cut of the paint, Dave. Go over here and give me a little cut in this. 
Now I don't want this real liquidy, but I don't want it thick either. Here we go. Okay, 10 minutes left? Okay. Here we go. That's pretty good. And you notice I didn't cut the entire drop that I put out. I still got, I've still got next to the stuff that I've cut, I still got that thick drop so I can, if it gets too thin, I can pull in some of that thickness, which as a matter of fact, I, I know what I'm looking, you know, this is one of those things, a trial and error, you kind of just get to know when I see myself working it on the palette, what I'm looking for, because I want to get a glob of paint on the end of that toothpick and then come over to my piece drop it right into my wash bowl there we go and just kinda wiggle that around and <laughs> and I'll get this up against the shirt too Dave there's a good wash bowl and not done with a paintbrush you don't always have to use a paintbrush to paint. But that's the wash bowl. We'll let that dry. Put that over here. And just kind of clean up the toothpick head a little bit. And I just I have a whole I have a whole container gang of toothpicks. Bamboo. These are bamboo from um uh tropical, you know, the tropical drinks with the uh the umbrella and stuff. There's all kinds of things in here. Different sizes, different shapes. But that's 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 a good that's a good modeling tool is toothpicks. Now, what else can we do? We're all in the interior. So we always just keep referring back to our instructions. Let me take a good look at that. We see what else is in there. Now, something that I've noticed here on, as I'm standing here looking at the back of this page, right here in the top, we have an overhead panel. This is probably things like uh, turning on radios and things, you know, things like that, nav, nav equipment, probably things like that up there. I'm not really sure what's in the overhead. But then again, if I really wanted to know what was in the overhead, I could go to my reference material, which I showed you before, and all those books are on the internet, and you could actually find, and you know, you might even get a, get a, uh, a black and white drawing that would have a breakdown of the instrument panel that would actually point to each each individual thing and say, you know, this turns on a, a heater, this turns on your de-isa boots, this turns on your hydraulics, blah, 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 blah. So, anyhow, now I noticed that that, and it's black, so we might as well find part number 35, the overhead panel, and get some paint on that. This is how you build a model. This is how it goes about. And you can see I grab my trees and take a look. And I see nothing resembling it there. And this, I might as well show them this too while I'm doing it. This is what I'm looking through. This is how I keep all my parts while I'm building. Okay. And I see that part sticking out right now got only five minutes left it's on the tree it's got a good attachment point right there and I think we are going to take this and paint this right here we take our interior black not flat black interior black grab a stirrer and let's do this lazy I'm gonna give you a real bad habit now folks <laughs> when you see this you're gonna be like oh uh -huh. You can do this. I'm, I'm not going to, you know, you can do this. And after I get the paint on this, I will say thank you and hope you learned something. Put it out so we don't have a lot of volume here. Again, some quick PBM. Close up your top good and tight. Get it out of the way. And lo and behold, 
I'm going to take the paint stirrer. Why am I giving you bad habits like this? Because I'm a bad influence. And honestly, folks, it doesn't get any simpler than this, does it? Welcome to UG the Caveman Painting Techniques. Uh, before paintbrush exists, I paint this way. And that is it. That is it. And I thank you for joining me and my clam bake Cape Cod Dave camera guy here. We thank you once again. I hope you have learned something here on simple groundwork and diorama techniques. And we'll see you again right away. Bye-bye. Have a good one. Keep on modeling.